And welcome to Shroud of the Avatar release 30. Um, uh, didn't do an R29 first look. My R31 comes after a weekend of playing it, so I should have some clue what I'm talking about. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you today is Play Offline. This is uh, new in R30. I'm going to switch character here, proceed, hit new game, so the single player mode, uh, this was a kickstarter promise, there would be a single player game as well as the uh, multiplayer MMO thing, so this, this is the sort of Ultima follow on, uh, so people that liked Ultima but didn't play Ultima online this is what they, they were backing it for. Now, a side benefit of us coming in, uh, coming into this uh, mode, is we get to see the new female avatar, who mysteriously has no hands. I'm not sure why not, uh, but there you go. No hands, new female avatar. We'll be a bit paler. We will be... Angie off cough now names this in and of itself is a uh, new feature with final white coming in well just under two months now they want to have a way to uh, stop people sniping all the best names. So if you have been playing the game, since R29 at least, any any character you created in R29 with that name, that name is reserved. Unless you create a new character with a different name, in which case that name will be reserved. So the last the last name you use to create a character will be reserved uh, at R32 until that point where you make a character. Uh, so, we can therefore assume I will continue to be uh, Wintermute of Cough and my main character. So, you'll be noticing this is uh, massively sim similar to uh, the multiplayer starting point. Uh, Destiny, let's go. Ready to begin. I'm going to do the Ranger just because there's some bits I want to show you later on. Uh, we won't do it much. A Ranger of Truth. There we go. Farewell for now, Arabella. So, this is all shared content with the, uh, the MMO part of the game. The quests are all the same quests. The difference is there's no other people around, it's just you. Uh, you can play it in a sort of co-op mode. Or at least you will be able to, I don't know if you can at the minute. Oh, and we go into the rift. Like I said, it's the same as what you used to. Yes, I need a bow. Let's go. Let's hit the escape key. Let's pick up the bow. Let's talk to Edvard. Let's give it a shot. I do have hands now. Look. Which is handy. Z. So, this. This is new. That's not the reticle. That is uh, the target indicator. Let's, uh, let's just do one of our things. Level up all my stuff. So, if I now hit F1, you'll see my target indicator switches on there, and I can 
here myself. Or at least that's the plan. I think I've probably uh, thoroughly exhausted my I think I did everything twice. Let's go back to talk to Edward and carry on. Alright, you'll meet us across the bridge. We're all sorted. So, let's loot the body so we can complete the quest in Soul Town. Let's open the gate. And let's kill some skeletons. Dead skeleton. So I'm just going to run through here. We'll kill the other two skeletons. Here he comes. He'll run off because we ran too far away from him. Alright. There's one more skeleton there. Come on then. Oh yeah, I've got a ring quick. Ooh, I think I'm out of crit criticals hit him there. Excellent. So as I said before, it all uh, all very similar to the multiplayer. No real, no real difference. A boat. Uh, Favour to ask, right? Escape. So, but what we can do at this point? Save game. There we go. So that that is a significant difference. Other than the fact that you're all alone. Same in the game. Right, let's see, we'll just head to Salt Town. So this crashed the first time I did a video, which is which is what I did the pause for. Now we get the first of the exciting Linux bugs of this release. Well, the second one is you notice I'm constantly walking. That's actually a Linux bug from R29. One of the new R30 bugs is some of the guards look like alien invaders, which is very exciting. Now, what am I going again? Energy. There we go. Edward. Edward's notes on Source Bridge. All the usual stick. And I get experience points and all of that stuff. Okay, so it's all the same quests as you see in the in the uh, online version. If we go over here and uh, talk to this woman about Quincy, is it this woman? No, she's the one that's worrying about her daughter. Daughter, right in my journal. This woman. Solis Bridge. Quincy. Quincy's broken sword. And that from the night, Quincy. There we go. Few items. I've got some gold. Sorted. So what I'm going to do is, uh, oh, come on, is uh, head in. I'm going to do the regular starter quests and I'll pack them all. 
and we'll go and do the things that need to be done in uh, Forest Bridge. And then I will cut back in the video to me standing around outside and move on to show you the next new exciting oh, more scary guards. Next new exciting thing. Can we get mail off the gentleman? Yes we can. Oh yes, excellent. And you notice, obviously, since it's single player, nobody lives in any of the houses. You can own all the houses in this version if you want to. More scary. Let's talk to Ashton. Take the fight to the dead. That's all the uh Ooh, scary. All the sort of spirit quests. Let's just uh Unlock some things. There we go. Focus, subterfuge. Alright, I'm getting dexterity, that's fine. That's uh, insufficient gold. Okay, so we can't do any more. So I'm going to leg it out of town. And when I see you again, I'll be standing outside of Soul Town, having done the quest in Solace Bridge, and we will move on to the uh, more significant feature of single player, which is the companions, for which we will need to travel to our address. Doing some quests. So I have some money. Uh, we're going to head to Aris, but before I do, I just want to note uh, that the Overland map has had a uh, major uh, refresh, I guess is the word. Uh, rivers and stuff are made to correspond to the original plans. Twisty, twisty Sunny Rivers now, look. Everything looks a lot different. It's a bit hard to see at night, obviously. Uh, but one of the things that looks most significantly different is uh, Arduous, which well, I think it looks much nicer now. Let's go over here. You can see the castles and everything. In the, in the Blue Reef Arduous style. Let's get in here. So we're still in single player mode. Doing a quest by ourselves. So in Ardoris, there is a companion to meet. There will eventually be one companion per quest line, but only the companion for the love quest line is in in this release. It's the first companion, it's the first the first instance. I am going to dash straight in to Sequina Square because I believe, I could be wrong, I believe our potential companion is over here. Bard. Clutching some sort of instrument. How wonderful it is. My name is
So I'm not entirely sure what what there is. What there is, what the trigger is to get her to come with us. Clan fits her in. Crossbite. Splendid. So, I've received a summon Fiona Fitzowen whistle. Let's have a look. Summon. There we go. Let's put it there. Summon companion. I suppose the thing to do now is uh, head out of town and summon her. Well, let's see. I need to hand in the mail before I go. this for mail delivery. Let's drag it. So I'm not sure if we need to go into a scene. I'm just going to uh, head on out of our address and see what happens. And then summon Fiona. Now there has been some discussion of a uh, talking combat pets in the forums, but I would remind everyone that this is the first companion, the first release. Things will change and things will improve. Let's see how it all goes. Okay, so we do need to go into a scene to summon up. So let's trundle off. Go into the East Perennial Trail. There we go. And see what she does. Here I am. There she is. She's doing poetry already. I believe she'll follow us. Yes, she will. Let's run over here. Ooh. See if she'll uh, do anything. No. So far. So far, she's not attacked the skeleton anywhere at all. So there you go. I think we can talk to her. Yes, we are. If you say so. So not particularly fleshed out yet, but there nonetheless. Uh, I was going to say in the middle of that combat that uh, 
one of the things that's changed in this release. Key, there we go. We'll have the key. Here's the text over the names. Has has changed. So before we had green. <laughs> Green and and blue and yellow. Now things that are just regular are yellow. Uh, Fiona seems to have given up on us. And if they're if they're more dangerous, they will be orange. And finally, a sort of dark red there we go killed everybody so that's single player mode I'm gonna leave it there I will just loot these uh, loot these things and uh, save it and uh, when I return I'll be back in the uh, the more normal multiplayer mode and we'll look at some of the new content there is All right, I am back in multiplayer mode, and uh, before we start looking at some of the new stuff, let's get the important things out of the way. I'm wearing my flower crown, which was a reward for purchasing an add-on during the telethon. There you go, very fetching. Uh, the telethon spring telethon I should say and I can now summon my giant butterfly there we go and I can make it rain petals look at that is not pretty and that's not all new in this release the uh, start and dance there we go excellent and another one to look out for the Macarena you have to like sing the tune in your head for now There we go, round and round. If you're old enough to remember when that was a big deal, I'm sure you'll be delighted to see the new dance moves in the game. Right. So, the reason I've started off here in Diamond Fields, and massively encumbered, I'm carrying all my stuff, is because we're going to talk about crafting. Now, I did a video on crafting. It wasn't my most popular video, I'm sure. And it was a week before R30 came out. And I didn't think too much would change. And really, not an awful lot has changed. But what's changed is significant enough to basically affect everything to do with crafting. So, I have prepared for this video by uh, uh, getting a whole lot of gold ingots. I've got some silver ingots. I'll show you them in a bit. And I have been crafting. If we scroll down. I've been crafting long sword, hilts and blades. Uh, just regular iron. We'll talk about master, master work stuff in a minute. I'm just going to do long swords. Now I could just uh, multi-craft them, but then I won't get the critical success possibility. 
So what critical success does is it gives you a bonus 50 durability. And look at that, I did it the first time. I got 10 because <laughs> because uh, I've only got a, look at that, 23% exceptional chance. And the first go at it, I get a 50. So in this release, let's just uh, flip now to some background information. Uh, hats and armour, different types of armour now have different maximum durabilities. You can see them all there. Uh, swords, see my max, my max durability in my sword is now 80. Uh, that's because it was 100 and because I've got an enchantment on it, I get minus 20 to durability. Two enchantments, in fact. So that's the way it's going to work now. So swords normally are 100. Let's craft another one and see how it goes. But you can... Well, look at that, I did it again. I'm on a roll. Either that or it's broken. You can get a special super bonus swords. So that one's only 100. If you craft things one at a time. Regular. We've, we've, we're over the roll. Just getting regular swords. So you get extra durability, which means you can there was another one. But well, three out of ten, I'm not even finished yet. I'm beating the 23% exceptional item chance. Craft. I'm just gonna run through the rest of them. Like I said, you can't bulk craft if you want to get the exceptional items. You have to do it all manually. So, I got a few... It's quite annoying having that. I've got a few exceptional items, so I'm going to take one of those and make a masterwork. Oh, for which I need silver ingots. Why haven't I got any silver ingots? Because I'm a Muppet. I'm going to end the video here. I'll be back in a second. So, like I said, I have some uh, plus one long swords with extra durability. I'm now going to create masterworks out of my plus one. So, for that, you need five silver ingots plus one, and then craft, and it will see it will destroy the item if it fails. So, I've got an 82% masterwork chance because I've leveled some stuff up. Let's proceed. 
and it's seeded. So, you see you have a choice of uh, bonuses. The major bonuses have a minus 20 durability and the minor bonuses have a minus 10. So for your lesser swords, you might have to stick to your minor uh, bonuses. I'm going to go all out on this sword, choose that one. Uh, turns into plus three. So the masterworks are introduced in this release after the enchantments, which we'll get to in a bit, were introduced in. Be careful with the with the uh, masterworks selecting the one you've already taken. And enchantments are, are an alchemy thing, uh, so there was no way being a master blacksmith to improve a weapon. Uh, so now we have this masterwork stuff. I'm going to go for it. Still 82% chance. Pretty good. Yay. Ooh, plus four strength. I like that one. An iron longsword, a plus four strength. Now, I'll just uh, hold control down so you can see where the bits come from here, look. They've... they've streamline the interface in this release so you don't see all the bits all the time you have to hold control down right so I've still got some silver ingots left now you see the second time I'm at 54% now I'm not comfortable throwing away my uh, iron longsword at this phase so let's find my iron longsword plus one craft that instead. 83%, there we go. Let's go. Fingers crossed. Ooh. And we must go for dexterity because we didn't get that one yet. So we've got an iron longsword of plus four dexterity. Mm -hmm. You see how the minus 20 is eaten into our durability bonus. So, you may think it's not really worthwhile having crafted all these other long swords, and uh, want to at this point break them all down, so which you can do. If I take one of these iron long swords I made, and I can salvage it, and I get a metal scrap. Uh, there's a separate skill for salvaging. Just go in here. It's salvaging, right? So I'm presuming, although I have no evidence to support it at this point, that the higher your salvaging proficiency, the more stuff you get back. So metal scrap, if you look in your recipe book under smelting, refined materials, you will see that metal scrap if you have 12 that's essentially equivalent to 2 ore so 12 scrap and 2 ore there and if we go back to the iron ingot here 4 ore so that does cut down your uh, resources wasted if you're trying to just build only exceptional items you can also just scrap random stuff you've picked up off the street when I say the street obviously I mean um, enemies in the game as long as it has a value in that column you can scrap it there we go you have to use the correct table so obviously if it's um, hammers or axes they're made by carpentry so you have to use the carpentry table to do that. So I should now have quite a lot of metal scrap, which if I was going to do a lot of sword production, I would... It's not in that list. Let's, let's check in smelting again. I would then use to make more ore and then more sword components. There you go, 53 mess of scrap I'm holding on to now, and still massively over encumbered. 
So the same thing works in uh, different scenarios. Let's just head over here to the tailoring table. So I can build quite a lot of let's have a look. I can build augmented chest or epic. So let's have a go for an epic chest armor. Craft. Again, 23% chance. I didn't succeed. So chest armor has a 150 by standard. If you have an exceptional item, it'll be 200. So I'm just going to keep going until I get 201. I got lucky with the swords. Obviously, no luck with the chest armor. I, I've got lots of yards of leather just to be on the safe side, but maybe it won't be enough. Still not enough, still 23%. No. Well, you know, it's recording of a live event. It can't always work out, unfortunately. All my luck with the swords. That's how it worked. All my luck went with the swords. That's a shame. Anyway, I will create a masterwork nonetheless. We'll just have to uh, live with the fact that it's a uh, less than impressive uh, bit of armor. Right, 80% chance for this. Let's go. So I could go for the plus 4 dexterity, but that will take the durability down to 120. 130, sorry, let me do my maths right. Once I would do a uh, minor health, that will leave the durability quite high at 140, so we'll do that. And we'll try one more time. It will select the same armour again, just like before. 50% this time. I'm just going to slap one of the other ones in. Just for the fun of it. Go. Ooh. Focus bonus. That's going to be good. Leather armor for mages. <coughs> so we've done that. Now we can scrap stuff just the same. That's uh, on the on the let's let's make some more yards of leather and uh, have one more go at the chest armor. <coughs> ooh, 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 I want fine materials. Leather from scraps. Go for it. How many can I make? <coughs> Just one. So on these, uh, the lower level tables, there is there is basically no point um, not doing the bulk crafting. So. Turning on the floor, there we go. It's still only the one skill. I've even turned off the uh, training on it because I can just try again. If it doesn't work, so we'll just let that trundle through. 
So, and while that's happening, let's discuss why all this uh, talk of durability is important. And that's because with the release of R30 on Thursday, they announced that primary durability, so that's, if we're looking at my sword here, primary durability is the second number, 37. Uh, that would no longer be repairable by repair kits. So previously what happened, if you took your sword to a crafting station and slapped it with a repair kit on, it would repair the maximum durability and as well as some of the secondary durability, which is that second number 30 there. So on Thursday, it was a situation that everything would eventually would eventually be gone. Uh, apart from the things you bought, which would always be repairable. So if you bought any add ons, it would be repairable. And then, on Friday, they announced a whole bunch of new stuff, uh, including some new package deals with housing and this concept called Crowns of the Obsidians. Now, Depending on the pleasure level, you will, you will get a collection of them. I've got a bunch in my bank, I've taken three out. Uh, the value on Friday night was two and a half thousand a crown. I don't think I think NPCs will know any about them buy them for two fifty. So you can't use them to uh, basically you know, buy gold in games so effectively. They're five dollars for a single crown. Uh, you get a slight discount if you buy sort of, uh, I think 20, 20 and 50. You get a small percentage off, but it's still a very expensive way of, of getting gold. Now, if you go to the correct crafting station and use a crown of the obsidians, so I want to, I want to repair that with a crown back at 140. That back up to 80, yeah, you will get the full repair. Using a repair kit on table no longer will no longer uh, improve your max durability. So on the one hand, this seems to undermine the changes that you made. I don't know why I'm failing so often, 90%. The changes they made on, on the release on Thursday to increase the crafting demand. Uh, but on the other hand, it means you can always spend money. So we got 2 16. We can have another go at the epic chest armor. Let's do it. Well, maybe I should have augmented chest armor. What do you reckon? Twenty three per cent still. Let's go for it. Didn't even succeed in crafting it. Oh, there we go. Hooray. We did it twice. Would you believe it? Right, so let's let's use my remaining silver. And I'll have some left over. Augmented leather chest armor plus one. 82% chance. Go. Oh, and look, look, that RNG, she turns around and basically messes us. All of that, eight yards of leather, we've got two scrap. Let's try one more time. Yes. Ooh. All right, so I think focus again. Let's go for that. Let's assume that we'll be mage focus characters. So 
Oh, I've got a bunch of stuff now. Hey, I'm not encumbered anymore. I'm not throwing away so much stuff. While I'm here, let's do the crown thing. So, there's my existing supple chest armour. Let's find a crown. And the repair button lights up. And well, hey, back to 140. And I'm just going to do the sword as well. So you can see, it'd be the same thing. I mean, there's not much to see. Oh, the butterfly's getting in the way. So my sword. Crown. It's a bit of a waste because obviously it's not, neither of these things are exceptional items. But given how much uh, leather is involved in making these things, I, I'll repair them for now and uh, look to collect these things later. So I've got a spare crown, you know, for emergencies. We're going to go here. So you remember Alchemy Station now. Masterworks required silver, and what we find in oh, what I want is enchantments. Enchantments require require gold. Uh, so what I'm going to do is enchant. What will come up first? Right, augmented leather. Right. So I've still so because I did a masterwork. The second masterwork would have only been at 50%, but an enchantment it's its own separate percentage of things, so I can do that at 80%. So let's go for it. It could just destroy everything, of course. It can destroy. Yes, I know. Ooh. Ah. I don't know what I like. Any of them, really. It'd be it'd be a shame not to go for the uh, the big bonus. Let's do that. Plus five. So what else did I have to enchant? I had some swords. I made earlier, right? I understand now. Iron longsword plus three. This is a plus three longsword of intelligence, so let's go for it. Ooh. Well, I'll we'll go for the big bonus again. So it's a plus five longsword, very nice. Again, when you choose the recipe, it always picks the first thing in the list. So this was plus four strength. This is more of a, uh, a fighter's sword. Let's see what we get. Uh, we might get a pile of scrap, obviously. Yes. That's a shame. Always a risk. Plenty of spares, be ready to scrap all the ones you didn't make. What was this one? Dexterity. Yes. Ooh. Well, there we go. We got our full strength back. Let's go for that. Plus four strength. That's very nice. I don't think there's anyone else we want to do now. So, ooh, we've achieved legendary crafter status. I'm going to make some Gaia Sim gems. There we go. Gaia Sim give you earth bonuses. 
So let's do Gem Socket of Chest Armor. Ooh, I don't know what Theogy gives. We'll find out. Air achievement. Cool. And that's gem socket. That. Focus health. So gas him is earth. Basically, the first thing on the list. Um, I think we've got some other gems. Let's have a look. Ooh, tempestry gem. That's water. Let's try that. There you go. So gems don't have any uh, durability drain. Masterworks and enchantments do. And critical successes when crafting uh, made goods will then give you extra durability to use up. doing extra bonuses and stuff. So if you want to apply all these bonuses to things, you want to start with the uh, exceptional items like that. So that concludes the crafting portion of the video. I will now uh, see you on the overworld map for the rest of the new stuff I'm going to come up. Okay, so I'm in Airy, which isn't a new location in this release, it's been around for a while now, but there's a few things that are worth checking out here, and it was the uh, first major town on the way from uh, Diamond Fields to where we were going. So first of all, what I'm going to do is head round to the vendor, and some of that stuff you just watched me craft I'm going to put on the vendor so if you're watching this video and want any of that stuff you know where to find it here's, here's our man I think you'll find that a lot of the things on the vendor were put there by me in fact all of them because nobody's coming here it's like advertising. So what should we put here? Let's put some epic leather chest arm up. Let's put it at the bargain price of 400. And let's have an iron longsword. Oh, I've already got lots of them here. Let's do an iron longsword of tempestry. And let's do that for, what should we go for, 800. And there's already a bunch of stuff there, that's all we're getting. So this is the crafting pavilion area, but while we're here, let us just go over to this house. This gentleman here has a uh, Rofo I think it is has a little vendor with lots of handy stuff on it and ooh, if we go in here you'll note a whole bunch of benefactor crafting stations or founder and expert they all, they all give the bonuses I think 
see at the top here. Plus five blacksmithing level. So they're very handy when you're starting out because you'll get through it a lot fewer uh, consumables like the coal and the curing salt and all that sort of thing if you use one of those crafting stations it's quite handy for the actual early vendor and also the crafting supply merchant is in the pavilion and there are a whole bunch of uh, empty houses if you've not got a house yet if i remember correctly one along here, yep, see that one at the end there, that's available, that one's available. So if you're looking for somewhere to stick a uh, roll lot down, if you've been uh, crafting your way to vast wealth, come and check out Airy. So there's that. The uh, second reason I came here is to go into this shop and talk to the Obsidian Crown Merchant. So this is, I still have one gold crown left over, I got the bank earlier. So you see here, I can exchange my gold crown for one of the other crowns. So I can change a bronze, a constant, a copper, an iron, meteorotic iron, silver, and white. Now why would I want to do that? That's because, for instance, a potion of capacity increases my, my carrying capacity. I don't, I don't really need that. I'm fine with... I've got plenty at the minute, but I could do it. And seven New Britannia months is approximately a week uh, of actual time in the real world. So, that's what else we got. Reduces reagent use chance, expedience, plus 40 swift gathering for a month, precision, plus 10 matriculation, particular collection. Now, it reduces arm and weapon damage of 25%, and that's a good one given the, the new things. Plus 25 salvage and repair skills. Uh, decreases focus use from sprinting. So, you see they all need different sort of crowns. I am going to go for a swift gathering. Now obviously it only lasts for a week, so I need a copper crown. Let's go. It only lasts for a week. So, there's not much point taking it if you're not going to be uh, doing a lot of stuff in the next week. It has opened up a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of arguments about pay to win and all that. Some very interesting faces posted on the forum from the point of view of the developers. Um, all right, so I've got one of those seven months or a week. I'm not going to do it now because I'm not going to go in gathering anything while I'm doing this video. But I can take it any time I want. And now that I've done that, I'm going to put the butterfly back. So I don't accidentally consume... Oh, there we go. Oh no, because I'm putting the wrong thing on this. Sometimes I'm on my pit. No obsidian potion of expedience. Yeah, so there's some uh, debates on both sides. Uh, the bonus is, you know, forty percent gathering time it is a major pain point. In the gathering. It's. Uh, it was uh, there was a big argument about the lack of gathering time bonuses on the benefactor tools. If you the uh, so if you look here, where have I got one? Tanning. See, I've got equipped a tanning off prosperity. 
I've not got these ones. I'm used to using my. Uh, I'm using some stuff that I've done with kits. But they gave gathering time bonuses in the past, and from the start of a. a R30, I think even R29, they didn't. And since it seemed to everyone to be implied in the description when we bought them that they would give a gathering time bonus, there was a big furor, uh, a lot of arguing, and the developers have come back and said they will implement a gathering time bonus. They won't be, they won't be as good as the tools you can craft with the uh, the engraving kits but they will be better than what they are now in terms of the bonuses uh, but that's not until R31 that that will all get implemented and they remain indestructible which is intended to be well from the point of the developers was, was sort of the point all along from the point of view the people who bought them was never really the point was, was the major outcome of all that. So, I'm going to head up the road here and as we go along through Blood River in the bright sunshine, and I'll just review my uh, checklist of stuff to blather on about. I've talked about the crowns now. I've talked about the uh, talked about that stuff. Now, if we turn the music down, audio. Let's just turn that down. Can we hear anything? I'm not sure we can. But one of the new things in this release is the ambient sounds in various scenes, possibly not the overall map. Uh, the ambient sounds change from day to night. Uh, I've always had the music on, so I've not noticed this yet. But it's, you know, a bit more realism. Now, we're at West End, and the reason I've come here is for the Hospitalia Greeting House. Is it Greeting House? A meeting House? I'm not sure. It's basically, the Hospitalia Association is the thing that started up in-game uh, of a group of people who were trying to help new players get into the game, encourage them to be, uh, you know, old players. That whole idea was formalised by uh, Portalarium. If we look at the titles, so now Outlander is your default title, uh, which which everyone gets when they join. These are all to do with how much you pledged. And then Hospitala, Hospitala. If you set Hospitala, you're indicating that. That's, oh, let me just uh, talk to talk to Rick Bat. I'm in the middle of recording a video. Hospitala to say I'm here to help new players. Uh, it's, basic, it's basically uh, formalising the player-led movement. And in this release, we have this. There we go. Hospitala ground sign. So this is a, a house to provide resources for Hospitala people. There's a chest in here. Read the note. There's also inside of here for you to use based on the honor system. Uh, you have something actually you do not need. Uh, there are logs, although they're bugged. Uh, don't 
put trash, don't put spam in it. Second page, please act with virtue. So let's have a quick look in the chest. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Come along, let's uh, stick one of my swords in. Uh, we'll put some epic leather chest armour in. And we'll put a long sword in for helping out new players. So this is a like a trial run. The idea is there'll be houses like this all over that the hospitalers can use and uh, uh, yeah, in, in their quest to help out new players and encourage people into the game. So I think that's quite nice. Uh, we'll head back out and uh, we'll look at some of the new content. Back on the old world map. Oh, I'm jumping around. I'm dealing with input bugs. What we want to do is head in this way. So this is in this direction. We're going towards uh, High Vale uh, through the. If we went through the pass there, and I'm just going to uh, stop for a second and type in. Dot Z. So zone chat. This is a new feature. Oh, some neck. This is a new feature in this release. Yes, there's some, there's some weird issues as far as mouse input is concerned. Also, you'll notice sometimes you can't walk over perfectly reasonable places because they've not aligned the. Uh, The invisible map of where you can walk with the new layout of the map in all cases. Anyway, so High Vale is actually through the pass there. Uh, I'm talking about High Vale because High Vale is uh, on the path of courage and there's a whole lot more content in that path in this release, which is where we're heading now. So, I just I, I put it in zone chat and then didn't tell you about it. Zone chat is for everyone in the zone. Zero is all the nearby players. Uh, harvest. Uh, ferry to Norgard. So, if we could chat to all these people right now with zone. I'm going to put it back to local. So the Courage Quest line has a bunch of new scenes. You will see up here uh, Demig's Battle Camp. Uh, there is, I think across the river there it is, Ferig's Battle Camp. Now we have been to those before. There was a hat quest that visited both of them. Although you, uh, you got to it by going through the portal. Uh, the town on the coast, which I ran through, is also new. But the significant part, the sort of ultimate part of the quest is Valhold, which is the capital of the Knights of Norgard, and the culmination of the Courage Quest, as I understand it. I have been up before and had a quick look around. I didn't get really far because I hadn't really followed the quest through. Apparently, there's some things I need to know before I come here, and I didn't figure all that out, but... Let's go in and have a quick look around anyway. With my butterfly, there we go, right. Let's sprint so we don't waste too much time. So you can see it's a castle. It's standing in ruins. I think it's significant to the plot. There are some people walking around 
in a dejected state. Survivor, which obviously, you know, a survivor of what, we ask ourselves. Everything is quite dilapidated. There are some buildings. Including... So this, I think, is one of the new Viking-style homes. I could be wrong. Oh, deformed guards, no oh dear. So, in this release they've introduced Viking packs. Uh, which include a player and town uh, lot deeds and Viking style houses and um, a bunch of other stuff, including uh, obsidian gold crowns, additional ones as part of your pledge. So I'm coming up here into the uh, main palace with some more deformed guards there's a throne room here somewhere although I've not been in it yet so that's Valhold it's quite distinctive it's you know it's new art not there's not a lot of stuff in the game that looks like this before now so it's nice that it's not just a uh, another cookie cutter implementation of a, an area, it's something distinctive. You can't live here, as far as I'm aware, it's, it's intended to be in this ruined state as part of the plot line. But there you go, new in R30, you can come up and check it out. If you've done the prerequisites you can even, even do the plot. Let's leg it for now. I'm going to head around now to Brittany, which was new in the last release, and uh, look at that. to the mainland. What was this town called? Again with an E, I think. Estgard. So there is uh, there is uh, stuff in Estgard. There are NPCs and stuff worth checking out. I'm going to sneak across this field here and get on this road. Will allow me to get to uh, Brittany without passing through any control points. It's quite handy if it is a bit of a long way around. So, yes, the Viking the Viking packs only uh, cover row houses at the minute. There's three different packs with increasing levels of stuff, but all of them are a row house, um, prayer and town lot deeds. There will be village ones, at which point I might, because uh, I have a village prayer and town lot, that's one of the control points. Uh, I might melt that down and get the Viking pack with the village plan around town lot in instead in order to play with all the cool Viking stuff including a horny helmet and who wouldn't want a horny helmet I say so we come round to the coast here we will see Brittany just around the corner now this also has all been redesigned rest of the overland map so it looks quite different to what it did when it was first introduced you see me getting pushed to the side there by the invisible area Brittany graveyard got updated in r29 it now has uh, npc characters and wildlife wandering around it's not yet got backer names on the tombstones so we'll not look at it there this is Brittany proper 
and we're going to start off in Brittany Field. Brittany was introduced in R29. Brittany Fields is new this release. Um, so we'll go and check it out. It's quite pretty. So I like the farm the farm area of Brittany. Brittany itself, in case you weren't aware. It's uh, it's so large it's basically being split into five separate scenes that will be linked together. Uh, but it's supposed to be the capital of Arabia. So it's supposed to be the largest thing. And we're nearly in here. Come on. So here we are in Brittany Fields. Looking like sunset. I'm going to go on the road here. You can see Brittany in the distance there behind the walls. What I want to find is just like a a palisade structure, there it is. Let's see if I can just head across the field. We're off and running. So, it's intended to be like farmlands with farmhouses. Oopsie. And people's lots suddenly appearing in front of me as I run along. So there are actually gatherable resources, it's quite strange, uh, you don't usually get them in towns. Uh, there's some cotton plants, there we go, gate opens, lots of available lots, here's our town cryer. Just up the way here is our vendor. And so, as previously discussed, let's stick some things on the vendor. Let's look, a long sword. It's made by me. I'm the only person using these, these uh, vendors. It's clear. But let's stick some stuff on anyway. sort of centre of town, so to speak. There's some shops and stuff. Uh, armour shop, weapon shop, uh, your usual usual sort of things. Alchemy shops and all that. Head back out the door again. And we'll just nip into Brittany. Because although it isn't new in this release, it's the last release it was in. Since I didn't do a video for the last release. Because everything was so buggy on Linux. I might as well stick it in at the end of this one. And also, you know, stick some stuff on the vendor. So there are some people living here. Look, there's a crafting pavilion down there. There's some people who've got the vendor set up by the crafting pavilion. So it's worth having a run along. It's being a relatively unpopulated scene. It's, it tends to load fairly fast. Oh, did I want to go up there? I don't want to go down there. Yes. And here we have the main gate into Brittany. In we go. So 
So the five areas that will make up Brittany are intended to be uh, fairly distinctive. They're not, they're not all going to look the same. Uh, so that was quite rural, the area we're in. The graveyard is uh, obviously different again. And Brittany itself is the uh, urban urban conurbation, is that the word for it? Anyway, it's quite busy and slow to load. I will drink some tea while I'm waiting. Here we come. So I think this scene has more NPCs in it than any other scene that's previously existed in Shadow of the Avatar. And here we are by the deformed guards. So, let's see. I want to head to the docks. So, boat, boat to Kingsport seems like the option there. Let's head over this bridge and then hang around. up a bit. Does that help? Possibly not. So I'm really here to show you the scenery so I hope you're taking it all in. So it's not a promising road. some mass now. So here's the harbour. Obviously there's a lot of action down the down the seafront. The town crier and and crafting pavilion are in this general direction. Here's the bank. Town crier, crafting pavilion. Location of Crafton with William regarded. There's a town crier. Let's talk to the public vendor. Let's see what see what I've got on here. I've got some granite, very reasonably priced, and some dye. Let's stick on a um, epic chest armor of tempestry. going for it. And then, let's stick a couple of swords on. Who knows? Maybe you'll feel sorry for me and buy them. Maybe you won't. Did sell one. So let's just check in the bank. Yes. Oh, I sold some granite blocks. Let's just filter it to sale. Sold some stuff. Oops, I'm not in the, there. We go. Let's take that gold to boost my reserves, and let's finish off by heading up into the castle, which is at the top of the hill up here. quite an impressive scene. The performance can be pretty poor. I've got a whole lot of RAM and other stuff going on here, although I've only got a medium graphics card. Here's the castle. 
guard, so only one of them is deformed. Uh, one normal, one deformed guard. And here we are in the throne room where our old friend Arabella and her cat are oh. oh, standing around waiting for us. Uh, and I assume ultimately some quests involved there. But I'm not investigating fully. Let's check out the upstairs. Oh, it's a long way up. Yeah, it's a throne. Let's sit down. Location of Royal Throne recorded. There I am, completing my flower crown. So, that was Shroud of the Avatar R30, my uh, potted first look. Uh, once again, it goes in a bit long, but I think we'll all be like that if I do them from now on. So, uh, you, know, you can always not watch them if it annoys you. I uh, hope it didn't annoy you though. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to R31.